Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We say this week after week, but you are a gift to our congregation, and we sincerely mean that. We thank you for tuning into this service. Uh, we have an outdoor worship service on this particular Sunday, so we're offering this online piece, and we're very grateful to you that you tuned in. I'll be reading from two different scripture passages this morning. The first is the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 51 through 62. And then I'm going to be reading some selected verses from Galatians 5 that I think will help illustrate what Jesus is talking about in Luke 9. So here are these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And now from the fifth chapter of Galatians. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. If you're living by the Spirit, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again, we thank you for the gift of a, a new day where you pour out your mercy upon us and we're grateful people that your grace and your mercy flow freely towards us. We also recognize in these readings, God, that you call us to a way of life that's different than the way that we can live without you. The ways where we are in control and make our own decisions are very different from the ways of learning to listen and follow and move with you. So we thank you, God, that you do for us right now what we cannot do for ourselves, and you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit to focus us and teach us what we need to hear. In Christ's name, amen. So the, so the text from the Gospel of Luke has always been very uncomfortable for me. I've always been perplexed by it. It just felt like Jesus was being very unkind, to be totally honest with you. When people are asking him things like, hey, hey, Lord, I want to follow you, but first I got to go bury my father. I mean, that makes sense to us. Lord, let me say farewell to those at home that I love before I turn and follow you. And it always felt very uncomfortable to me, but I read it with different eyes, different ears this time, and what I'm actually hearing, it is very challenging. Jesus is laying down a, a challenge for us, and what he's asking us to do is put life with him and following him above everything else, um, but we do that by just taking that leap of faith, and you can tell with these people who are speaking to him about following him, what follows when he says, follow me, is but I need to do so-and-so, but, Lord, I want to follow you, but. So I think in this gospel text, God is calling us on the but part. What is it that you need to go do that's greater than the thing 
that I'm calling you to do, which is life with me, life in my spirit, life that is guided by a benevolent God who brings love and compassion and forgiveness. What else is more important than that? And I think Jesus is definitely calling us to that. It's interesting to me because this particular part of the scripture in, my, in the Bible I use, the New Revised Standard Version, the subtext for it says the would-be followers of Jesus. The would-be followers of Jesus. Jesus, I want to follow you, but I need to do it on my terms. I need to arrange it in ways that are convenient for me. And with our life today and all the time we spend on arranging things and making them convenient and making them work for us, it's hard. It is really hard for us to think, okay, I want to respond to a higher agenda. I want to hear God's voice first, and then I will move ahead and do what I need to do. It's not like God doesn't understand the things that we need to do with our families and our everyday activities, and then the things we do when someone that's special dies. It's not, God is not saying, I don't understand that. But again, it's a different way of focus. It's a different way of looking. God, through your eyes, how do I arrange what is before me? How do I walk? Where do I go? Who do I connect with? And I read the words from Galatians 5 because it fascinates me that Jesus is inviting us into a life where we live by the Spirit. We live by his Spirit and his teachings. And then Galatians tells us very clearly, there is a choice that you need to make because there's a Two, there's two different, clearly two different ways of living in this world. You can live in a place where, again, you make all the decisions for yourself, about yourself, you make all the arrangements and plans. Or, as the Galatian text says, you can live by the Spirit. You can live by the Spirit. And what will happen for you if you live by the Spirit? Well, we have right here, the fruit of the Spirit will grow in us. If we are living by the Spirit, what we will notice in our lives that our ability to love, our ability to feel joyful and offer joy, our ability to have patience and be kind and generosity, faithfulness, all those things will grow. We will notice our ability to grow in those things because God is growing those things in us as we make our decision to live by the Spirit. Going back to the gospel text, another thing that, that interests me is the first part of the text when it is clear to the disciples that some people are not making ready for Jesus. They're not receiving him. So James and John say to him, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? That's who we are when we're not living by the Spirit. And we all have this challenge when we're not living by the Spirit. Who among us cannot think of times when we want to call down fire, so to speak, on those who don't agree with us? For whatever reason, if you're different from us, if you don't walk, talk, dress, whatever it might be, the ways that we think are acceptable, then we tend have a tendency to call down fire in some way. Maybe the fire comes from our words. Maybe the fire comes from our actions. And Jesus is saying, there's a really, really, really different way to live. You just need to follow me and learn to live by the Spirit. And if you live by the Spirit, the Spirit will guide you. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow.
Worshiping is one of the ways that we stay connected to God's Spirit, so we're grateful for your presence once again. And go this day knowing that the power of God's Spirit is with you. When we have decisions to make, God can help us make the decisions that will grow the fruit of the Spirit in us. Go in peace, and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.